If Marilyn Monroe were alive today, to witness the awful mess she'd made. Um, on that note, welcome to the Monkey Bar. Uh, today is a very special episode, or at least semi-special. Um, we have a guest here um, who's not going to say anything because he doesn't have a microphone, but other Zach. Um, Zach, is he Zach Alpha or are you Zach Alpha? He's Alpha, I'm Prime. Right, yeah. I need to follow the left Prime. Or Zach with a K is joining us. Zach with a CH is my loyal as ever co-host. Um, I was worried that you wouldn't show up, though. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I won't go into details. I got a shitty day today. Yeah, you said you lost your notes on this episode. Oh, yeah. Um, um, yeah. My computer is acting very funny. It won't turn on. I called about everything except uh, the color blue. <laughs> um, but uh, as long as you have like a firm grasp. Oh, I do have a firm memory. Because uh, this is a pretty important episode, to me at least. It's about uh, the classic anime slash manga, mostly the anime, though, of Yu Yu Hakusho. Yu Yu Hakusho is an uh, anime that's not as popular as Dragon Ball Z or Naruto, but it's had a devout following since, uh, for the last 25 years. I think last year they celebrated their 25th anniversary for the anime. I heard rumblings about a sequel coming out of remake. Oh, that'd be great, uh, for reasons that we'll get into later. Um, but Yu Yu Hakusho is a paranormal anime about this high schooler who uh, gets hit by a car. He, like, sacrifices his life to save this kid. He gets hit by... And he gets hit by a car. And I guess, like, the spirit world, which is presented as very bureaucratic in this world, it's... Uh, they said, oh, well, you weren't scheduled to die for, like, several more decades. So they give him a second chance to, like, come back to life. And he has to run all these errands. And eventually he does come back to life. Spoilers. It's like in the first five episodes because it goes on a different path than how it begins. It becomes more action oriented. Um, there's a 40 episode long tournament arc after like 26 episodes. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, which episode are you at? I I got done with episode four actually. Ah, okay. I fell a little bit asleep during the last half, so all I I have vague memories of a turtle lolly. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that was uh, where the house burns down, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I forgot what she looks like, actually, because I don't think she shows up for the rest of the series. Good, because she's kind of creepy, and I can't place why. Huh. Um, but, yeah, it's a it's really neat paranormal action anime. Uh, it's got really neat uh, characters. Uh, the characters are great. All the characters are. I have a bit of a question, though. Was this ever on Toonami? Oh, yeah, it was. Back in the early, early 2000s. I have vague memories of the character Photon. Yeah, um, a Botan. What? Botan. You said, oh. you said Photon, like Photon Torpedoes. <laughs> I thought her name was. All my notes are Photon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, she has a weird accent, which... Oh, oh, oh I thought she... Yeah. Bingo. Yeah, um, but yeah, like, it was on Toonami, and, uh, I remember only watching episodes two and three while it was airing on Toonami. Uh, there's kind of an interesting story, not really interesting, kind of weird, considering how much my sensibilities have changed since then, though, because, like, in episode five, I think, uh, like, Yusuke has to come back to life by being kissed by somebody he knows, like, Sleeping Beauty, mm -hmm. and he goes into Kuwabara's dream and, like, tries to, like, subliminally get him to, like... Do in the, in, get in the mood, yeah. And then he like right right before he wakes up in ho shock horror, I changed the channel because like I didn't really, I was kind of like didn't really know what to think about that. It, it kind of like was a shock to my system for some reason. But I wish I'd been like a second late because like they just kind of brushed that off. It's not like it's basically like uh, Naruto kissing Sasuke ex on accident, accidental gay, uh, the gay panic stuff, and it's like it's not. I don't, I don't know. Like yeah. I, I wish that I had stuck with this anime uh, back through then. back then because it is really, really good. Yeah, I'm hooked. Yeah, um, it has a lot of good, re really neat themes. Really neat. Uh, it makes you, it makes you think more than Dragon Ball because ah. Dragon Ball Z was about guys punching guys, and Yu Yu Hakusho, at least later, like in their fights, it takes more influence from uh, JoJo's. Uh, especially in part three. I'd really like to talk about my experience the yeah. first ten minutes. Or... Yeah, go ahead. 
Now that opening, that I'm watching the dub, mind you, because I it's Funimation. I will watch a Funimation dub every time. And it's like you know, yay, life and love, and you see all these characters, and it opens with him being hit by a car. My first reaction says, "Hey, hey, that's a key What the fuck? He died! Holy shit, he's dead!" <laughs> It's, and it's kind of a brutal death, actually. They kind of show him ragdolling. Yeah, the well, what was, was more brutal for me watching it was the, his funeral. Like, just seeing everybody, like, genuinely upset. I know. I was expecting the principal to be a butt or some... What did they fuck the butt? Anyways, but, like, expecting him to be all, Yo, no, I can't believe this happened. Walks away. No, he actually was upset. Yeah, especially his mom's reaction. Oh, his mom is the most realistic character in there for me. Mm. I swear I'm related to her. So she reminds you of uh, Misato from Evil. She does. It's like Misato if she didn't have a cool secret agent job it was just her being a drunk all day. She's a, just a deadbeat mom. Well, she kind of is. Mm -hmm. I mean, she rarely appears in the series after a certain point. Um, oh, I, I, I even mean, said so in my notes. With this formula, the characters I like the most will only show up once or twice, you know, every ten episodes. Mm-hmm. And the ones that uh, are the longest, you must learn to love them. So, when Kuwabara shows up, and you and the first thing I was going to say, I remember this note, I heard is Kuwabara, Kuwabara. Oh yeah, Volgan. I kept hearing Volgan, and I'm picturing this like headcanon, and that's Volgan's great-great-grandson. Mm -hmm. Also, I kept calling him until I realized his name was Kuwabara, and that wasn't just another character. I kept calling him Special Needs Ginger Kid. <laughs> yeah, what did you think of his voice the first time you heard it? I was like, is he, is, I will say, is he special needs? He founded like, a couple of people I know. That should be like like Chris Sabat, who uh, I told you voices uh, Vegeta, Piccolo. Um, uh, recently, he's voiced All Might in uh, My Hero Academia. God, like he had to, he's making up for Kuwabara. He, he does have range, uh, but Kuwabara's voice is just so like distinct, like, like for all after all those years of uh, hearing it as a kid, like like hearing it as an adult, I like immediately. I just it, it's just as clear as day. Yeah, it's just like like I describe him as uh, Barney the dinosaur after smoking five packs of Marlboro cigarettes, and it's just, it just sounds like you're a busy. I'm gonna kick your ass. Speaking of voices, I love the one guy. He's one of the thugs who goes. Hey, look there! It's Kuwabara! I'm gonna have a word with you! He doesn't even think you like, I'm expecting him to turn into, like, a monkey and attack him. Yeah, they all, like, have, like, the Funimation doves, they just have so much fun uh, doing the voices. And in fact, um, just the recent, uh, just last night, uh, one of the, the episodes that I watched, uh, I think it was episode, like, 70, yeah. and there's a scene where they're interrogating uh, one of the bad guys, yeah. uh, Yusuke, uh, like, after the villain... Uh, has a speech, and Yusuke's like, uh, why don't you say it again, but more dramatic? And the funny thing is, is that uh, Justin Cook, the it was who voices uh, Yusuke, he's the uh, voice director for the dub. And, and he says it in, a, in, like, the way he delivers it, It's he's not doing the Yusuke voice, he's just using his regular voice. So what I think happened was that... Um, he actually gave criticism. Yeah, like, that was an outtake, and then they just left that in. And yeah. I think that's just kind of brilliant. From what I figured out about, um, for, about uh, Funimation... Usually, the main character or more important characters are actually voiced by the animation heads. Hmm. Like, May Hughes, voice actor in Full Metal Alchemist and Brotherhood, actually directed the dub. Hmm. Oh, um, my other favorite thing about the first thing I remember was, uh, 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 oh, um, the one guy who shows up with the purple shoot and the buck teeth. Hmm. There's a person we know, and he. Oh, yeah. Is that like the teacher's assistant or the, yeah. guy, the guy who uh, Kuobar tries to beat up? Yeah, um,. I, uh, he looks like Dark Universe Grant. I like Grant, but this guy... I, uh, that's a member of our uh, other group. Yeah. I used to... I call in my notes Bucky Beaver, this character. Huh. And I, I even put in there, uh, he uses his teeth to slurp the blood of unbaptized newborns and pregnant women. Huh. <laughs> well, you mentioned, like, because that was in episode three. Yeah. And it's funny how, like, how much these characters are stuck in my head. Because I remember, like, I remember, like, when I watched that uh, just last month, that same episode... It, like, I remembered it beat for beat from, like, the first time I watched it back in, like, 2002. Oh, I also love that every time I have to swear, we go, I'm pissed off. You're pissing me off. Oh, you're being a real pisshead. 
It's like piss in their favorite word. Yeah, like they use a lot of swears. Like, uh, what, what, like one thing that they mention, like that they say occasionally, is retarded, which is something you can't really say anymore. I did they ever say a reference to cool bar? I'm curious. I hate to be that guy. But... Um, I don't, I, I don't think so. Also, my favorite thing about episode two is so I'm watching this and I type into my Discord chat who, uh, it's called, uh, Underkill. It's a group I'm with, mm-hmm. and I said, "Oh my God, he saved the day by groping her." Oh yeah. It's, and it's... and the guy says, "Are you watching Yu Yu Hakusho?" <laughs> <laughs> and like six people, oh my God, I remember that. <laughs> and my favorite thing about this thing is you. Know, Look, um, he really should have planned it out more. See, I'm going to tell you this. You know, you need to save my... You know, that speech he does, he keeps pausing. He has a minute. Well, yeah, that's, like, that's a big anime trope. Is like, I know, it was pissing me off. Like, mm-hmm. I wanted him to like take... You're just waiting for, like, him to fade away at the last minute. Yeah. Because you know it's going to happen. Uh, same with the will they, won't they thing between him and Keiko. Uh, but but the thing is like it's it's less will they won't they and more when they where they because you know it's like they're going to what's how do you say her name uh, Keiko okay I kept hearing her name was Kinko and I'm picturing her as a, as a sex clown when she's not in high school I was thinking of FedEx <laughs> can't believe you have a dirtier mind than I do <laughs> I'm a horrible person um uh, but what was I gonna say um. Yeah, it's it's just it's just a great anime. It's really fun. I want to talk about more about my experiences. I'm being selfish here, but sure, yeah, one course. of my favorite things was the end where they have um, it was the episode "The Promise of Men," mm-hmm. which is the worst name of that episode they could have picked. Well, they have this part where this guy basically says, "Hey, little," I wrote it down as I as it was basically translates to, "Hey, give us five hundred dollars, little girl. We'll gang rape you in public." <laughs> and there was no way they could have skirted around that. And they, tr- you know. Uh, yeah, my favorite scene in like those like the early episodes is where uh, I think it was in that same episode where Yusuke possesses the that girl's body and just yeah. kicks the crap out of all the, all the and she guys. and she comes and goes ah, help yeah and like the part where she's just like where she's just repeatedly kicking the guy in the balls. Have um, you noticed that every character in the show that the more supernatural they are, the more sarcastic and brightly colored their hair is? Oh, uh, the more what? The more supernatural. Oh, um, yeah. There's actually a line, uh, uh, like one of the last episodes I watched, where uh, Isuke's like making a joke, saying, "Oh, Botan, do you need to pick up more hair dye?" And and then, um, oh yeah, uh, here's a fun drinking game. Uh, take yeah. a take a shot every time Yusuke says, "Give me a break." You'd be dead by the first ten episodes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, this like. But yeah, this is a kind of a sh- hard show to marathon, and I'm not sure if it's because of the pacing, because of the the uh, rough uh, '90s era uh, animation. That's what works for me, man. The uh, animation. Yeah, because today anime is so homogenized. Mm-hmm. It's just so look how everything is just so clean and edgy, and the characters are edge. Mm-hmm. It's nice seeing a character who goes, "I'm gonna beat you up, man." Also, I remember my notes of the, 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 his uh, cool bar was funny, the fat one. I kept calling him Tubbs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if, they, if, they, if, they don't, if they don't keep his job, he's going to eat his smallest sibling. Yeah. <laughs> I was rough on I liked the show a lot, though. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, I imagine it's a fun show to riff. Oh, we man, if we ever do a riff tracks thing, we should do this. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's just plain cool. It's genuinely funny. That, that's something that I like. I forget about with uh, with some animes because like a lot of anime that I watch, it, it, they tend to miss the mark when it comes to humor. I think it's more of a cultural translation. Yeah, that's something that uh, like well, people say. You know, oh, dubbing that's not so bad. You just you can't really directly translate some some jokes because it has to do with the culture. It has to do with uh, well puns. That's one a big thing with to do with uh, the. Jap- Japanese is that they uh, puns. yeah they love puns and puns just don't translate to English unless you know the culture you know the context and all that. My personal favorite pun I caught one pun when they have the two first uh, Oni show up one's red one's blue mm-hmm. you know, oh ho ho good cop bad cop the Oni are my favorite part of that episode and they're running back and forth screaming uh, yeah um, but yeah uh, uh, like, do you, do you think the dub is good? 
it works for me. Yeah, it does take some getting used to again because oh, I'm getting memories of when I was a when I was obsessed with Funimation stuff, and oh man, oh by the way, speaking of cultural stuff, I love how the dub's like we have to go to his wake, you know, <laughs> and they keep, and like there's a part where when he possesses uh, Kuwabara, Yusuke does he runs into the to Keiko's family and goes. Hey, I need to speak to your daughter. And the dad whips out a knife and goes, Listen up, cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> I just love the picture. Like, he, you know, he was about to stab him in the throat. Like, I love that. Uh-huh. And it led to a note. If you die while possessing someone, are you stuck together forever? That's a good question. Um, I don't know. Also, he's, uh, you say he's kind of playing with the devil when he's like, Hey, Botan, give me a break. Do this for me. Why won't this work? <laughs> I'm just waiting for her to go, hell. <laughs> okay, next time. Oh, man. My, I think the other thing I really liked about this show, though, is that she has this little, uh, you know, the little um, steno notes full of the rules of death and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it be nice if she gave him a notes to study? Hmm. I know they have to do that for plot demand. Like, oh no, you can't summon the fifth beast mm-hmm. until you dance three times and throw a fireball. And just saying, you know, oh, it's classified. Yeah. Uh, oh, but, uh, yeah. Um, you said you're only at episode four or five? Yeah, I, I, my computer died around five. Um, yeah, it's a... Uh, it, it takes a while for it to get uh, to like to pick up the pace and get into the action stuff, but I, I do actually really like the first five or so episodes just for, to have that uh, slice of life feel to it. A slice of unlife. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, yeah, like it has a charm to it uh, all the way through. I'd say. Yeah. Oh, um, another thing I remember. I'm watching the intro. And you played two Nadi intros about the third or fourth time. That who's the pink guy with the rose? Oh yeah, you don't see him until like episode uh, ten, I think. And then you go, who's that Sasuke looking guy? The one with the samurai sword. Mm-hmm. He is more like a shonen protagonist than Yusuke is. He gets compared to Vegeta a lot, and I can kind of see it with the hair. I mean, you'll see it eventually, but uh, he's like tiny. He's like five feet tall. Um, and he has a short temper, like Vegeta. And uh, does he does he overact? Um, it's more subdued, I think. Oh. Uh, he's just very brash, like, uh, and he's a sort of uh, sort of this Kuwabara's foil. There. I kind of know something about like uh, I'm using Persona as my examples, so like in anime and manga, whenever they have elemental abilities and like characters, they give the big tough, you know, I don't like you kind of guy lightning elements. Kuwabara has one in the opening. Uh, the guy in Persona 4, the gay one, has the lightning elemental. And Ryuji in Persona 5 gets Captain Kid who shoots thunderbolt from a cap of a cannon. Kuwabara doesn't actually have uh, lightning. It's oh. more just energy. Oh. Like, he has the sword, the spirit sword. Oh. And it, it actually has... You, you haven't gotten to this point, but like when he uses the spirit sword, it actually has a lightsaber sound effect. I oh, I did everything. I recognize like ninety percent of those sound effects. Mm. Like I don't know where I I cost you. You want to do the flying with the ding noise? That's an Evangelion sound effect. Mm. It's the sound effect they do when the angel uh, Sakiel in the first episode looks at Shinji and its eyes bl- you know glare. Mm-hmm. It's sad, but a show that I haven't watched in years, I can memorize the sound effect. We mentioned the sound. Uh, yeah, the soundtrack is d- probably one of my favorite anime soundtracks of all time. I love the jazzy bass line. Yeah, and like even the yeah even the English uh, opening, like the English uh, uh, en- like the ending uh, songs. I actually really love those. And like this was at a time back before uh, the One Piece rap just ruined uh, English openings forever. I really wanted to see four kid butcher this. Oh, that would have been that would have been something to see. Yo, kid, there's a kid named Yusuke and he's dead. Or he's he's asleep. He's knocked out. He's in a coma. Yeah. Or they, they, in they, in they the town even, of Oklahoma. Yeah, they wouldn't even been able to say coma. Just like saying, oh, he's unconscious. Wing, wing. Uh-huh. Uh... Yeah, it's funny because um, the guy, the creator of Yu Yu Hakusho, uh, Yoshihiro Tagashi, he's actually married to uh, the creator of Sailor Moon, and Sailor Moon had one of the worst dubs ever, and it's so bad that it's actually good. Botan looks like a Sailor Moon character. Hmm. 
Yeah, actually. Um, I wonder if it takes place in the same universe. Does the cosmology mix? Hmm. I, I don't know. Um, Nerds, get to this information. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, what's interesting, I wrote this down, was how uh, the main romance between the characters of Sailor Moon and the characters of Yu Yu Hakusho, uh, since these two creators are married, it's interesting to see, if you think of the main character of Yu Yu Hakusho being a vessel f for uh, the creator and vice versa, how different the romance is between both. In that uh, in Yu Yu Hakusho, the main character is this uh, dumb, brash, uh, borderline bully character. I call him a giant dick in the green tights. Yeah, he's a hooligan, so, sort of. I don't, and and on a side note, I really love his cost, his, uh, his wardrobe, yeah, his track suits. Um, it actually took some getting used to for me because I felt it looked dorky at first. Um, but uh, yeah, the, like the romance between uh, Yusuke, who's just this br dumb, brash hooligan, and the sweet, patient uh, Keiko, who's well, she's not really that patient because she's like punching him in the head every now and then to keep him in line. And the compare that to Sailor Moon, where the, the where the main character Usagi, or as I know her, Serena from the from the the Deke dub. Uh, but yeah, Sailor Moon. She's just this uh, slob of uh, like this very dorky girl who's like just lazy and just eats junk food and plays video games all day. And she has um, she actually has an actual love hate relationship with uh, Darian, or I can't remember what his name tuxedo is. Mask. Tuxedo, tuxedo mask. mask. Uh, and he's just this uh, sort of uh, sneering, like sort of he looks down on her, and she, he's like this. Like these, this uh, dumb adult, like older, older guy, and she's like, eh, "I don't like you." Wow. Like Cardinal says, I have never seen an episode of Sailor Moon. Hmm. I mean, that's fine. Uh, yeah, like I apparently in some anime fan communities, that's like a cardinal sin. Hmm. Um, I would say. <laughs> Just, just for shits and the giggles, I would recommend the deep dub. Just looking. At oh, it. I love bad dubs. It's probably, I, I would. I would hesitate to call it the king of bad dubs. More like the arc juke. Arc yeah. juke. I mean, I would say it's the king of bad dubs if you don't count ghost stories, which you shouldn't, because that was done intentionally bad. Uh, so, I've, I, yeah, I've heard worse, man. Well, Sailor Moon, it was interesting with that, is that it like they took so much creative liberties with the source material in that they actually added in scene transitions the first episode actually has footage of like the 40th episode so like as a like prequel to show what happens um what caused the fall of the moon kingdom or whatever oh. and yeah like the uh, luna the cat is voiced by an old woman in her like 50s this mary poppins like this british mary poppins woman what's with british people having a magical role in anime. I don't know, but I actually liked how uh, they changed uh, changed it to that from because uh, in the original Japanese language, uh, Luna had like a spunky uh, thirteen year old voice or like teenage girl voice. And what was funny about that? Well, I mean, yeah, I liked how uh, they had the old wise and carry uh, character uh, for. Luna, but what's funny about that was that in one of the Sailor Moon movies, Luna turns back into like a teenage girl, but she still has the old lady voice. God, um, for the person who I associated with on an internet forum who would be very into that, he was a creep, and I hope he gets hit by a car. Anyway, speaking of um, the things about I like about this, mm -hmm. if I really was thinking about it, it Kuwabara really redeems himself quick, fast, and in a hurry. Oh, yeah. That's probably one of the reasons I love that episode in particular. Like he's been, th he takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Yeah, we find out his uh, manhood code or whatever he calls it. A promise between men. Yeah. And here's the thing: he's 14 years old. He's not a man. Uh, he's either 14 or 15 because I read on the wiki he's like 18 by the end of the series. And there's a four-year skip. Or like, there's a one-year skip, uh, in like before the dark tournament. All right. Um. So he would be sixteen, or maybe seventeen. So maybe he's sixteen, because like they say, like ju junior high at one point is where they go to, but it's kind of weird in Japan where I don't I don't know how that works in Japan. Yeah. Oh. Oh. That reminds me. Hey, um, Miss Green Tights, mom. Yeah. <laughs> um. What are you going to do about your son's dead body? What do you mean? Um, you sent it back an empty coffin? 
Um, we've been worried. It's been like six weeks. I like I go. Um, hey, uh, where's your son's corpse? I, I'm pretty sure it's rotting now. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Um, My favorite line is, she went to slap her dead son because she realized he's alive. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, yeah, well, it, and that's, that goes back to the writing where uh, I like the part where Botan is like, you know, hey, let me, or like when uh, he's, like, he finds out that his body's going to be cremated and he has to stop it, and then Botan's just like, hey, here's my impression of Yusuke. Oh, no, I'm burning alive. Oh, that's one of the things. I love how she's laughing about pa- of a constant of being burnt to death. Yeah. And, like, you mentioned it being sort of tone deaf. I think it works. Uh, yeah, it's like, I wouldn't say it's tone deaf. It's more like you have uh, moments of humor. Uh, it, it's less, it's a, I'd say it's a little bit more tone deaf than what you'd see in your average Marvel movie. Yeah. Um, which is not bad at all. It's not, not even close to the tone deafness of I didn't Full mean Metal tone Alchemist. deaf is a bad way. I meant tone, a better way. It's a pendulum, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and it work, you know, like, it works like clockwork basically uh it's better than full metal alchemist i mean i love full metal alchemist but the humor in that is just so so distracting what the you know i i kind of like how you know hey look i have to let her recognize it's me grope grope because i have notes i wrote my notes and bullet points i'm like oh no 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 stop no grope no grope it's like 15 of them of me going down bad touch bad touch got at least three of those Mm -hmm. But uh, the creator of uh, Yu Yu Hakusho, and I found this out only recently, that he went on to do uh, Hunter x Hunter, which is also a really, really good anime. I need to watch that. That's also an anime that takes a long time to get moving. I kind of like the slow grind occasionally. Yeah. um, I noticed that a lot of anime reviewers, they say they don't have that much time anymore as they were as kids. Uh, hey man, I have. What do you do for a job? Well, I work in a factory for eight hours assembling tires. How about you? I watch anime all day and talk about it on YouTube. The Daily Grind. Another shonen arc with in the tournaments. Uh, What's with shonen tournaments? Uh, hmm? What's with shonen anime always having tournaments? Oh, uh, I don't know. I think I, I did watch a video by this one YouTuber, this one anime reviewer, explaining uh, the merits, at least, of uh, battle arcs, or of tournament arcs. <laughs> and uh, he didn't really, I don't know if, he, like, I forgot what he said, or if it's just, it's just kind of a tradition. Do you be funny? There's a tournament arc, and like, yeah, I'm gonna fight him. And like, oh, no, he died. What? Yeah. Uh, the Gitagon was killed in a car accident. <laughs> you win by default, man. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, the tournament arc in Yu Yu Hakusho is 40 episodes long, which is almost a third of the series. I have a dumb question. Can you skip any of the episodes? Um, if you want. I wouldn't, but, like, Bleach was huge about all that, you know, filler episodes. Yeah, this the studio that uh, directed uh, Yu Hakusho actually did did Bleach. did Bleach and Naruto and Soul Eater, I think. Soul Eater is be- uh, it's good, but not as good as this. Mm-hmm. I love Soul Eater's designs. Back to Yu Hakusho, I love the monster they showed out of Dionia. Like how they they look like Ron Perlman. Every single one of them is a Ron Perlman clone. Mm. Yeah, uh, yeah. The design is very, very nineties. Oh, Even the, the also the fashion too. In the credits, they show this guy with a mohawk wearing an outfit. I and I said this. It was like nine thirty at a p.m. I go, is that a Wolf Clan guy from Fist of a North Star? You have a guy holding the dynamite. Like, well, it works. Uh, you're talking about the guy with the purple mohawk. I it's uh it's uh, it's uh, colored by the credits, so I can't okay. tell. Right. But he's got a mohawk and the big barbarian outfit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that sounds like one of the guys in the Dark Tournament, um, but you're going to like his voice. He sounds exactly the way you'd think he would, but I'm not going to spoil it. Okay. Um, but yeah, I feel like if I had stuck with this anime when I was a kid, I would it would have been, been worth it. It would have been one of my favorites. Because when I was a kid, I really, really liked uh, anime or anything with uh, psychic or uh, paranormal stuff in it. Psychic, psychic powers especially. I love how... Hey, who's the psychic one? Well, you know that guy who probably had to wear a football when he was a kid when he played outside? Yeah? <laughs> yeah, that's him. Hmm. I am so sorry to the people who I make in fun of you in my of a bad group. Yeah. I- I'm in it, but hey, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but yeah, I just loved uh, stuff where like characters move stuff with their minds. That was just I actually tried doing that myself, like trying to like move books or. It'd be horrifying if you actually didn't kill somebody oh. and you couldn't replicate the show as an accident. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you can't prove that I didn't. My my, my fingerprints aren't. On. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, oh um. Uh, another thing I like about it is uh, the speed lines. I miss speed lines. Oh, oh, yeah. Because, like, you know, you can't just throw a pun. In anime nowadays, they, throw, they do the blur effect. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's all blurry and shit like that. But now, but back then, it was like, look, black lines are falling off of him like ink. He looks like Dark Star from the Winter Guard from Marvel. Oh, by the way, I kept referencing Thanos in the in my notes. <laughs> like, I went some bubbles. Oh, my God, this is uh, Marvel vs. Capcom Thanos. <laughs> oh, um, the big one that I remember, uh, or never, I said that twice already. One of the things I noticed that's kind of interesting to me was that they kind of make a mix of cosmic horror in the under in the sphere world design. One of my notes was, is that a shogith? That's a shogith. Yeah. Uh, it's funny you mention that because uh, the creator of Yu Yu Hakusho cites H.R. Uh, Geiger as one of his artistic influences. Like that Hall of Teeth, I was expecting like, you know, hey, Magic Gathering fans, oh my god, it's Yaga Moth. Um, yeah. My other favorite line I can remember was, I'll have you know I'm 700 years old, king of the underworld, and I'm very well potty trained. Oh, yeah. Go in, Ma. He's, uh, he, he's, he managed to, for me, managed to be a surprisingly good character. I was, I was going to hate him. Yeah, because he, it seems like... He, he he does serve as a comic relief, and you think he's going to be annoying at first, but they write him so smartly that they man like it manages to be good. Oh, um, I also remember another thing. This show got ripped off by Ava so much. Mm. Like, it's not always apparent, but like if you watch it enough, Ava has got like for example, the biggest one to me it made me click was uh, Shinji gets his ass whooped, Kuwabara gets his ass whooped. And it's almost the same level of brutality, but difference is that Kuwabara takes, you know, is doing it because hey, I have to protect life. She's like, I want to die. Um. I wonder if he's a millennial. Hmm. Uh, I mean, I think that that's what. Nah, probably. He might be Gen X. Um, but um, there was uh like something about Shinji that I read, and it was like in relation to this other anime character. I can't remember what. Not, but, uh, the, the girl, the fish. I don't know if it was. Uh, I don't know if it was uh, from Yu Yu Hakusho though. But it was like saying how. Uh, oh no! It was My Hero Academia. Was that uh, Izuku is also a shonen character who cries a lot and struggles, but he does it uh, of his own. Like he does it to protect the people around him. Shinji she just fight fights tooth and nail not to do anything. I think that makes Shinji more realistic, but Izuka yeah. more likable. Yeah, that's. I think that's the best possible way to sum up the yeah you know, that that sentiment. Yeah, I love Ava, but at the same time, it's not a happy love. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but back on Yu Yu Hakusho, I think the last thing to talk about is the ending, which I haven't actually gotten to, so I, I couldn't spoil this if I tried. But the most I know about the ending is that, and this is because the creator of the, of the manga, he actually had kind of a mental breakdown. Uh, because, uh, like, with, with manga, like, it's in an insane schedule that you need to keep up. Uh, you basically have, like, five hours of free time a week. Because, like, the rest of the time you have to be working on this on your manga to put out, like, 20 pages every week. Okay, um... um but the, the ending is very abrupt, from what I understand. It's, uh, it just kind of... Uh, like, yeah, like, you get, like, halfway through the last arc, and then it just, like, goes, like, I guess just ends. And then everything gets summed up, and some of the plot threads are just kind of left hanging. Which is why, like you mentioned, how uh, there might be a sequel series planned. Yeah. But I would love to see uh, like an anime-specific uh, and like actual ending or something to wrap up all the loose ends. Uh, Do you know what I think? Uh, what I like about that. So, I uh, manga is a hard stuff to do, from what I understand. As a fun, as one last Ava reference fan, that guy took years to finish the manga. The show was done for like eight years by the time he got it done. Mm. 
And I can only imagine if it was something like uh, like Yu Hakusho, it doesn't have an anime to soullessly rip off. Mm. Yeah, um, I I can't wait to see the ending. I hope it's not an ending that makes me go no, <laughs> no. Okay. Kickstarter, we need to crowdfund the sequel. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I'm hoping that's... Mighty uh, Ghost 9. Yeah, well, I'm hoping that uh, the ending isn't too disappointing for me. Like, the way it's been, like, you know, what's the opposite of hyped up? I would say... Uh, like, the amount has been shitted on, I guess. Uh, I don't even think that people have been have complained that much about the ending. Leaked out, I'd say. Hyped up, leaked out. Sure, sure, why not? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think I, since I'm prepared for it, it won't be so disappointing. But, uh... That's what I said about Pacific Rim. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's not it's not the destination, but the journey. Um, like, I will say this: the greatest ending of any anime or any hand or drawn thing I've ever seen was Gwenpool. Huh. The middle of it gets weak, but you know, but it starts strong, ends better. Huh. And I and it kind of spoiled me on endings now. Yeah. Um. But yeah, Yu Yu Hakusho. It's just. Really great uh, paranormal themed uh, monster themed. Yeah, they have monsters in it. Yeah, they have great monsters. They have uh, great character designs, great monster designs, uh, great set pieces, or like great background art too. Yeah, um, I, I miss pre painted backgrounds, so it wasn't mm -hmm. all digital. Yeah. Because when it's pre painted, you can kind of cheat. Look, that part's not drawn. I wonder what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, once you get into the, like the, I guess the Saint Beast's arc, that's where it's going to really get interesting because that's where they go into like the demon world and fight demons. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's all, it's all really great. All right. Yeah. I'm excited, man. Hey, maybe we can do another episode like catching up. Like when we... Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that in the, in the near future we can plan a follow up on, on this and maybe by then the sequel will be announced. I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm optimistic about a sequel Maybe, series. I think it was either a sequel or a remake. If it's a, well, if it's a remake, I don't know because they would have to like try and recapture the '90s aesthetic and. Or they'll just go completely modern, like. Uh, I don't know. God. Yeah. I mean, God. I mean, Hunter x Hunter had a really neat art style. So if they do it like that, if they have to modernize it, then. Um, It'd be cool if like they they. Uh, never mind. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, on that note, I think that uh, we can wrap this up. All right. I've been Zach. I have been Tony, and this has been The Monkey Bar. <coughs>